I don't even know where to begin this. Where do I start? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a little bit of a different one. I wanna sit down and do a story time video with you guys. If you followed me on my social media for a while, you know that Josh and I have moved quite a few times. And if you are new to this channel or new to me, hi, I'm Erica. I have moved a ridiculous number of times and I'm going to tell you the stories of them. So I thought this would be a really fun and funny video to make just because the stories that go along with the moves are pretty ridiculous to be quite frank. Josh and I, I swear, are cursed. We continue to have problems everywhere we move and each time we move, there's a backstory behind it that no one really knows because we don't talk about it. So I thought it would be fun to sit down and tell you guys all the stories, all the crazy stories on why we have moved so many times. So Josh and I have moved a total of six times in a matter of two and a half, three-ish years, which is a lot let me tell you so i think i want to start and go in chronological order as far as like the moves and kind of tell you the stories and then after the stories i have a little announcement that i want to make so yeah if you would like to hear all of these crazy moving stories then let's just jump right into it okay so the first move wasn't really anything there's not really a huge story behind it josh and i moved in together when we still live in fredericksburg virginia and that apartment was great we stayed the full term of our lease which was like a year I think we had no issues with that apartment we just decided that we wanted to change of scenery so we decided to move to Richmond Virginia which is like an hour south so we left that apartment and moved into an apartment in Richmond now upon apartment hunting Josh and I looked at tons of different apartments tons of different complexes tons of different things and we found this one apartment that we fell in love with the apartment we call Penny Lane because it was above a little pub called Penny Lane so that apartment was super cute. It had a balcony overlooking the street. It had these cute little French doors. It was honestly a beautiful new redone apartment that we were really excited to move into. So we go and check out the apartment and it's gorgeous. We love it. We're ready to sign the lease. We go and kind of check things out. We check out the neighborhood. Everything seems to be fine. We even go under into the pub that's below us just because we wanted to make sure we weren't gonna have any problems. So we go and check it out. And we're like, yeah, this looks good. Like it's a pretty small pub. Like we should have any issues because our unit was on the back of the building so all in all good to go so we moved into our apartment and we were super excited to be in Richmond and a couple days after moving in we started to experience some problems what we didn't know about this restaurant or pub that was underneath our apartment complex was that on Monday nights they do karaoke night and not just any karaoke night, a karaoke night that goes till three or 4 a.m. And it gets better. The room that they did the karaoke in was directly below our bedroom. Hmm. So as you can imagine, um, with loud speakers and old people singing Lady Gaga until four o'clock in the morning, we didn't sleep on Monday nights. The sound and the noise was so bad and the speakers that they used were so loud that it used to rattle our bed and rattle our furniture. Like, I'm not even kidding. So Josh and I would always know that Monday nights would be sleepless for us and it was always just not a fun time. We talked to our landlord about it. We talked to the police about it. We talked to Penny Lane and no one could do anything and Penny Lane wasn't willing to do anything about it. They were like, sucks to suck, whatever. So we had to deal with that and we lived there for about a year and we didn't sleep on Monday nights because old people were singing karaoke until four o'clock in the morning, which still just like baffles me. I don't understand the kind of people that would want to go to a random like pub that's not even super popular, like it's a pretty quiet pub and sing karaoke until four o'clock in the morning. Like that, like, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't, and not to mention, it wasn't even like it was like a young crowd or like a college crowd. Like it was like 40, 50 year old people that would go and get drunk and sing karaoke. So that's what we heard <laughs> trying to fall asleep. And it was never good singing, might I add. It's karaoke, so it wasn't ever good. So we kind of toughed it out and we knew that we weren't gonna stay in that apartment because of that issue. So we were like, okay, let's go find a new apartment. At this point, we were pretty familiar with the Richmond area and we got to know all the different areas and all the different neighborhoods and we kind of figured out where we wanted to be. And we found a beautiful duplex that the bottom unit was available. So we went and checked it out. It was stunning. We loved the space. We had an access to yard. We had parking. We had all the things that we wanted and it was fantastic. We signed the lease to that apartment thinking that we are gonna be there for a while. Like we are, 
setting our roots down like this is gonna be home like we'll probably be here until we buy a house you know like all good and so we moved in and a couple of things started going on there's actually a couple funny stories within this apartment that i want to share with you guys in this apartment um we refer to as the manchester apartment so in the manchester apartment we met our upstairs neighbors which seemed really cool they were super nice guys had no problems with them at first i think it was a couple of days after we moved in i was working somewhere and i get a text from josh saying i just walked into the house and there's at least three inches of water all over the ground and my heart just like sank i was like um what what <laughs> turns out oh my god this is so funny turns out one of the neighbors upstairs um, wanted to cook himself chicken, so he took chicken out of the freezer and put it in the sink to thaw it. He turned on the water to thaw the chicken and walked away and I guess fell asleep or I don't know what. <laughs> the sink literally overflew, overflew <laughs> while trying to thaw this chicken and came down and poured from our ceiling into our floors. And it must have been going for like hours because there was like three inches of water on our floors. So this guy must have like, just taken like a four hour nap and was just like, good night. And then just completely forgot that he left the water running. So it was really funny. We were frustrated obviously at first. And then once we figured out what the story was, they were super apologetic. They came down and helped clean us up. Obviously our landlord took care of the damage, but that was a process. Um, but all in all, it was fine. We got through it. And then some other stuff started to happen, which is kind of weird to get into. I don't want to get into all of it just because I'm not sure of the safety or legalities of things, but I'll put it this way. We started to have a very dangerous situation um, going on in that duplex that we were living in. We were on the bottom floor and there were really big windows, which were gorgeous and we love them. But we decided to install like two or three of the Nest security cameras like around just because we felt safer that way. It wasn't a bad area or anything like that, but like if I had to stay by myself, like it just made us feel better. So we decided to install them. We shared the, the entryway to both of our apartments had like a little porch and obviously we shared that porch. That's how we got in and out of our apartments was through this one little entrance. And we had a camera there and they knew and they didn't have a problem. We were like, okay, cool. And then some weird stuff started happening. So the cameras notify you anytime there's like motion and stuff like that. So we would be getting these notifications on our phone all the time, like all day, every day and all night, every night of people coming in and out of this apartment. And it was a ridiculous amount of people. It wasn't just like they had a bunch of friends and they were coming over to see their new apartment. And then that was it. It was like a constant all day, every day situation if you get what i'm saying so we were like okay that's really weird but like uh, like whatever like i guess they're not like doing anything and then more things started to happen we started to hear arguments we started to hear fights uh there were a couple instances where our neighbors decided to call the cops on them because of gun violence and having a gun out in public because our two neighbors had young children and they were obviously not okay with someone having a gun and waving it around. Things just started to get really weird. There were a couple of times where we heard some really bad fights. Um, people would f run out of the house in the middle of the night, like screaming, yelling. So we started to think like, what the heck is going on up there? Like like what is going on and like what are we like what we are below this like what is going on and then just some more weird stuff ha started happening like there was one time where i opened the back door to let lilo out and we had the patio in the back and then the unit above us had like a roof i go out to let to let lilo out and i'm walking around and i kind of look look down at the floor and i see a little like drop of blood and i'm like that's weird and then i see another one and then another drop and then another drop and i'm like what the heck and i kind of follow the drops and then i look up and on the side of the building there was blood dripping down the side of the building as if like someone got punched and like spit out blood or there was a nosebleed of some kind or something like that. So that's when things started to get really weird and really crazy. There was more and more people coming into the house every day. There was more and more violence. There was obviously drugs going through and in and out of that house. We knew that for a fact because we had our security cameras that had audio, so we heard those things. There were lots of crazy things going on. Like I said, I don't wanna to get too detailed into it because it was a very unsafe situation and I don't ever want that to like come back. All in all, we needed to leave that apartment and let me 
put it in perspective, that all happened within like a less than two month period of time. Like I would say maybe two and a half max. So we were like, we got in, we hadn't even unpacked everything. And we were like, we have to leave. Like, this is like not okay. We don't want to be involved in this. Like, like we're not we're not dealing with it and so we called our we called our landlord and we were like hey look this like is an unsafe situation here's what's been going on we have proof of it blah 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 and they're like sorry sucks and we were like uh, uh that's not happening like we're leaving either way so we actually ended up figuring out who owned the building and we basically were like we're leaving because of this situation and if we were to stay and something were to happen and someone were to get hurt that would be on you so they finally agreed to let us out so we packed up all of our stuff and we just left, like left as quick as we could. So yeah, that's basically the story of that one. And so what was that? That's move Fredericksburg, Penny Lane, Manchester. So that was move three. Now out of Manchester, we moved to the suburbs because we were obviously very shaken up by that situation. And if you know anything about living in a city or the city of Richmond to be specific, apartments are very hard to find in this city. Um, and it takes some time to find them. And we didn't have a lot of time given the situation. And the only thing that we could find available was out in the suburbs. So we decided to move out in that area. It's called Short Pump. And so we'll refer to this one as the Short Pump apartment. So we moved out there and finally like we felt peace, like we were good, everything was good. And this apartment we didn't have any problems with. This was the only move that we decided to do ourselves. It was a great apartment, no problems with it. We just realized that we really wanted to be back in the city. You know, we're young, our friends are in the city. It was a 30 to 40 minute drive to where we were to the city, to our friends. So we were just like, oh man, that really sucks. Like maybe we can like move back into the city. One thing to note about Josh and I is that we love real estate. We love real estate, we love home design, we love all those kinds of things. And something that we've always dreamed of doing is actually flipping houses. So we're kind of constantly looking at Zillow and Trulia just to kind of see what's going on and just for like shits and giggles and to just like, like poke around and see what houses are for sale and what's selling for what and just kind of stuff like that. So that was normal for us to be like, hey, look at this house. So it was one of these times that we were just browsing on Zillow or Trulia and this house for rent popped up. And it was in a very, very desirable area called Carytown. And we were like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. Like, we have to go check it out. Like, let's go look. So we went and looked and it was a perfect house. It was too good to be true, which it was and I'll get into that in a second. So we decided to move from the apartment that we were in into the house and we were so excited to be in that house. It had a backyard for the dogs, the neighbors were great. It was in a walking distance to literally everything we went to, all the bars, all the restaurants, our friends were close by. It had, we had a guest bedroom, it had character, like it was literally perfect until so it wasn't perfect. So upon getting the keys, we walked into the house that was supposed to be cleaned up for us and it wasn't, it was disgusting, it was filthy, there was bugs, there was urine, there was paint, there was all kinds of things. So that was one thing that we're kind of like, uh, like really, like you couldn't have cleaned it up for us, like I don't wanna have to clean pee off the toilets and dirt and grime and all that kind of stuff. But we were like, like whatever, it's like, that's what you get with renting, like it's a, it's a give and take thing. So we didn't wanna argue it too much. So anyway, we got over that. So we walk into the apartment and we're noticing that everything's dirty and then we go into the kitchen. And if you've ever rented, you know that normally you get a checklist and you're like, okay, you have to go through and make sure that like all this stuff is working and blah, 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 blah. So we were going through our checklist and we were checking to see if things worked and Josh went on and turned the garbage disposal. The garbage disposal decided to burst into flames. I am not kidding. We got that, we got that situation under wraps. And then I think we were cleaning up and I was like dusting a light that was like hanging above the island or like bar area. And I just like, like with a Swiffer just was like dusting it and it just fell from the ceiling, like broke. So we were like, oh boy. So then we're continuing to check things out and we realized none of the appliances are hooked up to the water. So we don't have access to, you know, our washer dryer. We don't have access to our dishwasher, things like that. So we were like, that's a nuisance, especially if you're paying a certain amount of money. Obviously you're expecting things to be working when you get in there. So then that situation to actually took a while to resolve. Um, and that was kind of the overarching theme in this house is that they would constantly send people to fix issues, but they would never get fixed. So they would keep having to come back and keep having to come back and keep having to come back. And we keep requesting like, you need to send a different person because this person doesn't know what they're doing doing, then they would send another person. And that person would be like, oh, well, this guy did this, 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 and now all this stuff is wrong. So that was kind of the overarching theme. One of the main things that we 
constantly had issues with was major, major, major flooding. The house was an old house and it was like a, like a flip, a flipped house or whatever. And whoever did the flip, first of all, did not do a good job. Obviously the thing fell off the ceiling and the garbage disposal burst into flames, like hello. Obviously it didn't have central air. So what they did, they installed like the European style units, you know, where it's in each room and you control it with a remote. And that was totally cool. And then a lot of weird stuff started happening. Um, we would be using the AC and we would start to smell like this really disgusting, like, like broccoli fart kind of smell and be like, oh, like what is that? And we couldn't figure out what it was. And people would come out and they'd be like, yeah, I don't really know what that is. Like the filter's clean, like whatever. And we would just be like, oh, like that's disgusting. But it would only happen sometimes. And then all of the units started, <laughs> oh my God. And then all of the units started to flood. So this is actually really funny. It was really frustrating at the time, but looking back on it, it's actually hilarious. So what was happening is water would flood out of these units. And I mean pour, like pour out of these units. Like you turned on a faucet and like poured out like a lot of water. Again, another maintenance request. Hey, all the units are flooding. You need to get out here and fix this. And turns out after a couple of times of someone coming, someone else coming, someone coming, someone else coming, like weeks of this and having someone in our house every single day since we moved in, we find out that whoever installed the units <laughs> put the drainage pipe to go up onto the roof instead of down outside. <sighs> Gravity doesn't work that way in case you didn't know. So what was happening is as you were using the AC and the condensation and the water and all that stuff, it would be trying to go in the path that it's supposed to go, like through the tube or whatever, and it couldn't because gravity, hello, and it would come back down and pour out of the units, which is why we were having that smell because there was mold going on from the sitting water, like just chilling there and then pouring back out. And it was a mess and no one could figure out how to fix the unit. They kept flooding, they kept flooding. One person would come, the other person, they blame that person, who'd blame that person. And we were just sitting in the middle of this, like, we are just trying to live, we're trying to run businesses here, like, you need to get this fixed. And then we started having other flooding issues, like our roof was leaking. There was one morning where, this was like right before our wedding too. There was one morning where we woke up and we were going to leave. We were going to Florida actually. And we had an early plane flight to catch and I wake up and there's about a an half an inch to an inch of water all over the floor in the same room that my wedding dress is hanging in. I nearly had a heart attack, okay? So I, obviously everything was fine, but I you know, messaged our landlord and I was like, you need to come fix this. Like we have a plane to catch and all of my wedding stuff is in there and like this is not gonna like, get it fixed. So then we had issues with that. There was obviously a leak going on in the roof up there. Again, no one could figure out what it was because apparently like everyone is just dumb and doesn't know how to fix things and people were blaming things on other people and we're just sitting there like, ah, like I just don't want water like flooding everywhere. Like we have to live here. I remember one time Josh had put his laptop down and it just so happened to be above the AC unit and we woke up the next morning and water had pooled all over it. So that was fun. We had problems in the basement constantly with flooding. It was not done properly. It was not sealed. When we moved out of the house, we found a lot of our furniture was molded that was down there that and that's where we had our office so all of our equipment was down there we had bags of equipment that were wet things like that luckily nothing ever got damaged but it was definitely a very stressful and annoying situation especially when you're paying a certain amount of money obviously you're not expecting to have to deal with these issues every single day and this was obviously affecting our life and our work because we couldn't work because workers were in our house and and it was a nightmare but what was the icing on the cake that made us leave this house was our landlord texted us or emailed us or whatever and was like hey like there's a grant going on for like piping through the city of richmond someone's going to come by to see if the house is eligible we're like okay cool whatever like yeah do what you gotta do so they came in and he's looking around and he does his thing or whatever. And then he comes back to us. He's like, all right, cool. Yeah. So your pipes are made of lead. And we were like, can you repeat that please? He was like, your pipes are made of lead. Like all of them, like the water pipes. And he was like, yes, all of your water pipes are made of lead. So Josh and I are just looking at each other like, 
um, that's not okay. And if you know, lead is very, very, very poisonous and is not good, especially in your water pipes, if you're drinking water or cooking with water or showering or the dog's drinking water or things like that. So we are like, oh boy. And then he goes, yeah, and there's a major leak in your main water line. Have you noticed that your water bill has been high? And we're like, actually, yeah, it has been kind of high, but we just figured it was because of the house. He was like, no, there's like a major, major leak going on. Like there's definitely flooding going down there. And we were just like, oh, my word. So we relay this information back to our landlord or the leasing company or whatever. And they're basically like, okay, cool. So the city of Richmond is going to pay to like do the pipes or whatever. So we're going to have to come in and fix them. And we're like, okay, well, what are you going to do with us? And they're like, nothing. And we're just like, what do you mean nothing? And they're like, yeah, we're just going to come in and, and fix all the pipes and you guys can just stay there. We're like, let me get this straight. You have to rip out all of the walls or majority of the walls and redo all the pipes. So take old pipes out, put new pipes in, and we're supposed to just live there through the construction. And you guys aren't gonna compensate us in rent and you're not gonna put us up in a hotel or you're not gonna put us up in another rental. You're not gonna do anything. You're just gonna let us live there. And they were like, yep, pretty much. And we were like, we are not living in a construction zone. That is not what we signed up with, nor what we are paying for. We were fighting with them. And this was like right after our wedding at this point. This was right after our wedding, right before we went on our honeymoon. So it was a very stressful time. And we fought with them, we fought with them. They were like, no, we're not giving you rent compensation. No, we're not putting you anywhere. Like either you can live in this construction and you can deal with the pipes or you can go. And we were like, well, we don't know what extent this is gonna be when they open up the walls. And also, I don't wanna be here when they open up the walls and have construction workers in and out of the house literally every single day with me just living my life, doing laundry, cooking food, like, no. So we were like, okay, I guess we have to go. Like, we're gonna leave. And we were so, so, so sad to leave that house because like I said, it was perfect. It was perfect in every single way. It was everything we wanted, everything we needed, but it was too good to be true. There were so many issues going on with it, so many problems. Oh, I have to look back on it and it makes me sad that we had to move but it's absolutely insane the amount of stuff that went on in that house and I'm sure I'm even missing stuff so then we were like okay we have to move from there let's find somewhere else to live we went and found another place to live which is where we are now we moved into the apartment that we are in now and it is a fantastic apartment we love it there's really not much to complain about we have huge windows we have great space like it's an awesome apartment we are happy with it and then shit started happening like, I swear you guys, like we have been cursed or we have the absolute worst luck ever, ever. Because this just keeps happening to us. I understand from people from the outside looking in, they're probably like, why the heck have you moved so many times? Like, why aren't you content with your life? Like, why do you keep having to move? Like, what is going on in your life that like is causing you to have to like pick up and move? Like, why can't you just settle down and be happy with what you have? And that is not like, we, we have been happy with every single thing that we have. The only move that we decided to do was one, one out of all of them, or I guess two if you want to count like moving from Fredericksburg to Richmond. But since we've been in Richmond, only one move was like our decision that didn't have any problems. I need to calm myself down. I'm getting worked up. <laughs> Well, let's talk about the apartment that we're in now. So we love this apartment. It's a great, great apartment. There has been some issues. Like I feel like every, every apartment has its things or this or that, but generally speaking, this apartment has been great. We've had a couple of issues with construction and the amount and what time they do it. Like they'll do it like really early in the morning, at like 4 a.m. or like stuff like that. And it's kind of affected like our work schedule, but nothing major. Now what is major that has been going on is, so in our unit and on this floor of the apartment complex that we live at, all the floors are made of concrete, which are beautiful. Everyone loves concrete. They're like the new thing right now, whatever. Since we moved in, we noticed that the floors would chip very easily. They'd scratch very easily. And a lot of like, it would like peel up and chip up. And like a lot of the floor would like, just kind of like, like chip away. And like, it was weird. But honestly, after moving that many times, we were just like, whatever, we're not even gonna bring it up. We're not even gonna say anything because we don't wanna have to like deal with it. Like we didn't care. It wasn't big enough compared to what we had to deal with before to like have our attention be like, oh yeah, this needs to be fixed. But then it started to get like really bad, like really bad, like huge chips. It would flake all over our feet. Like our dogs would be eating it, like weird stuff. So we brought it up to our apartment we we're like hey like this is going on in our unit like what is this and they're like oh my gosh like the entire floor is having the same problem we're trying to figure it out and we we're like oh yikes like okay well let us know when you figure out the problem and a lot of time went by in between that and basically what had ha what happened was 
whoever did the seal on the concrete floors didn't do it properly. And after doing a quick Google search, because I was starting to get like concerned, I come to find out that most sealant that they use on concrete is very toxic, especially to animals. And it can, you can absorb all the bad things like through your skin, so through the bottom of your feet and stuff like that. So I was like, oh no, 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 no. Like that's not okay. Like I have dogs that are obviously like sniffing the floor or licking it, like we're walking on it. Like that's not okay. At first they told us that they were gonna try to fix the issue, but in order to do that, we had to move out of the the unit. We had to move out of this apartment and of course they were gonna put us in a hotel like they should and they were gonna figure it out. And we were like, okay, I mean like I don't want to do that, but like whatever. And they were like, okay, we'll, we'll, you know, that's the plan and we'll get you guys the details once we have everything settled. One month went by, two months went by, three months went by, like we heard nothing. And so we kind of reached out and we were like, hey, like here's our concerns. This is obviously toxic and that's not something that you guys told us, but we've done the research to find out that it is. And obviously that's not safe. You guys don't have a timeline on how you're gonna fix this. And to be honest, if we're having to move all of our stuff out of this apartment, we'd rather just go. Instead of having to move everything out, have them wait to have them figure out the situation and then move back in. We were just like, I don't know what to do. So that leads me to the announcement. And you guys have probably guessed that probably from the beginning of this video. And that is we are moving again. Yay! Yay! Oh my gosh. So I wanna talk a little bit about this because like I've mentioned before, we have moved a lot. This will be our seventh move in three years, which is a lot, especially considering that we are not like military or anything and we've been hopping around in the same city, not even like new places, new states, new cities, whatever. And I understand from the outside looking in that we look crazy. I am fully aware of that. And it's kind of like embarrassing to admit that we have to move again. And I even thought about just like not saying anything and just moving. But the fact of the matter is like, that's ha like it's happening. And I thought it would kind of be fun and funny to share the stories of like why we've had to move each time because no one's like, no one knows that they just see that we move. At first we were going to deal with the situation. We were like, no, we're not moving. We are not going through another move, like not going to happen. And then some other stuff started to fall into place where it just worked. We thought about it long and hard, like we prayed about it. We were like, okay, well, if this is what we have to do, then like, then things will fall into place. It'll be easy. And that's exactly what happened. So we are moving back to our hometown, which is Fredericksburg, Virginia, which we're actually pretty excited about. We love Richmond so much, but Fredericksburg is home to us and it makes sense for us in a lot of ways for our businesses family is closer, all that kind of stuff. So it makes sense. We're also moving into a house. And this time it is a house that is owned by my family. It is a family property, so there will be no lease. And if anything goes wrong, we can deal with it ourselves and actually have it fixed properly. So it ended up working out really nicely because it was a property that my family was kind of in limbo with. It was a property that they've always used for commercial. And the county that it was in like changed their zoning laws and in order for that to remain as commercial, they had to upgrade the parking and spend a large amount of money doing that. And my family didn't want to do that right now, obviously, because it's a lot of money. They don't want to do it. They don't want to spend it. So they had to move the tenants that were in there out because they legally couldn't be in there. And if they were kind of in this limbo state of like, okay, well, we don't want to spend all this money to upgrade the parking, but we don't want it to just sit there and we don't want to sell it. So then this, the issue of the floor started happening and you know, we're talking to our family about it. Like, oh my God, we found out they're toxic. Like, oh my God, like this, oh my God, like that. And they were like, like, what about the property? It's a cute old house in Fredericksburg. It's like a stone's throw away from my dad's office, which is awesome. It's right by downtown Fredericksburg where our friends live. Um, we have other family and friends there. So we're really excited to be there and we move mid-February, and which is like right around the corner. It is definitely annoying and a nuisance to have to move again. And it's also crazy that we have to move again. You know, that's life. And it was laid out so simply for us and so easy for us that we feel very confident in the decision that this is what we're supposed to do. So that's kind of the announcement and the stories of why we've moved seven times in three years. And I know that's crazy. And I know a bunch of you are probably shaking your heads like, what the heck? Like, what did you do to get on someone's bad side upstairs because like things are not going well for you? And we understand that. It's very frustrating for us too, but we try to look at it from a positive standpoint and we try not to look at things negatively. Like, yes, it sucks to move, but it's something that we, we just power through and we do it. 
and that's basically it. I don't really know what else to say. It's a very interesting story. It's a very complicated story, and I just thought it would be nice to sit down and explain this once and for all so all of you guys can know the story behind it because it's funny, one of the questions that we get asked a lot like when we're on wedding days and we meet other vendors or we meet, you know, some of our followers that, you know, want to come say hi to us or whatever the case may be. They're like, hey, can I ask you a question? We're like, yeah, sure, what's up? They're like, why do you move so much? Like, I'm not even kidding you. Like, that is a very common question that we get asked. So yeah, I just want to sit down and explain everything, and I hope that makes sense to everyone, and now everyone kind of understands what is going on. And I also hope that um, everyone can send some good energy, good vibes, or good prayers, whatever you believe in, our way, so that this never happens to us again, and that we can finally be free of all this crazy stuff that's been going on, and live our life with no problems in a place where we're safe and happy. So yeah, if you like story time videos like this, then give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I know this is different than what I normally do. I'm normally way more makeup oriented, but I'm trying to share a little bit more of my life and my story with you guys. And I also just think that this is just a really funny situation and why not laugh about it with everyone? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.